he is persecuted and none hindereth. Giving all praises to Yahweh Hashem, Yahweh Yeah, I was going through uh, Isaiah chapter 14. And I read down to the sixth verse and I said, let me do a video on this. Or let me look into this. Looked into the word persecute or persecuted. And what this verse is saying, it says in the sixth verse, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to start from the first verse. I'm going to breeze through it. And I'm going to hit some of the uh, certain points in this uh, chapter. It says in the sixth verse, Isaiah 14, 6, he who smote the people in wrath with a continual stroke, he that ruled the nations in anger is persecuted and none hindereth. So let me take out the word persecute. And as I go into the, you know, the uh, etymology of the word, biblically, and the root of the word persecuted, persecuted, a part of our job, you know, you have Israelites that say, um, oh, don't worry about Esau, don't worry about the white man, don't worry about them, just teach Israel. Well, part of this ministry is to tell this man what's going to happen to him. Isaiah chapter 13, shake the hands that they may go into the gates of the noble. So our focus is on really two nations, the Edomites and the, uh, the Israelites, our people. And we are to tell the, the Israelites that there's a kingdom for them. First, first thing first, we're supposed to tell them that they're Israelites that they're Israelites and that there's a kingdom for them. And you know the rest of the story. And we and we are also commanded to go to the number one enemy right now. The enemies are the, all the nations that came up against us. It says in uh, Jeremiah 30, verse 16, every, every one of them shall go into captivity, all the nations. But number one on the, on the list are the Edomites. Every nation that you see, every person that you see on this planet Earth, they, their line goes back to one of the people of the ancient world. Every last one of them. No scientist went in a lot, you know, you know, went to a, a, a laboratory and created white people. Like that myth of uh, in a nation of Islam, they say that the white man was created by uh, Yaku, the big headed scientist, which is a fable, clearly a fable. Shows you how gone our people are. The so-called white man was not created by Yaku in some goddamn library. Shows you how simple our people are. That's why the scriptures speak about uh, old wives' tales and uh, fables. That's a story that somebody just made up and um, Jake just grabbed onto it. That's why they're going to be caught out there. And I'm going to say another thing about these other um, disciplines, these, these uh, philosophies like uh, black consciousness you know, comedic sciences and, you know, Islam and the Moors and Baptists and Methodists, Roman Catholic. You know, Jake is all into that. And those are nothing but stumbling blocks for Jake because the Most High is setting them up. The scriptures say that the Most High set up the stumbling block before them. But we're not to put a stumbling block before them. If there's a stumbling block before them, the most high put it there. So the ones that are caught up in these uh, other philosophies, let's say, you, you're not to have anything to do with them. You're not to tell them that they're Israelites. I mean, when you first encounter them, 
I go back to uh, back in, um, I believe that was October of 2013. Uh, Sarnetta actually came down to the camp and he, um, he said, can I, can I call up, uh, can um, Polite come down? I said, yeah, yeah, tell him to come down. And he called him, he came down <clears throat> about maybe 15, 20 minutes later. So we had this dialogue um, for about, a, I don't know, an hour and a half, two hours. And we basically told him the truth. We told him who they were. And we, were, we wasn't trying to hear what they had to say. And that's all garbage. That was all garbage to us. It's garbage to us today. And when they couldn't get it, that's it. We don't deal with them no more. After the first and second admi admonition, um, admonition um, reject, You know, after the first and second uh, warning, when you tell them that the Israelites, you don't get it at first, you tell them again, there, there shouldn't have to be a third time. It's, it's sealed through the spirit that he's not going to get it. So what's going to happen? He or she's going to ultimately uh, succumb to the uh, prophecies. And the main prophecy before this destruction comes is the um, the Karagma, the MOTB. And we've told other Israelite groups that teach otherwise that they're going off. And we really don't, don't, don't have to tell them anymore because we gave them over two warnings. But out of love, you try to get them to get it. And another reason why we, you know, go so hard on the uh, Karagma, the MOTB, is so that they know when it actually happens that there has been a prophet or prophets among them. Then it shall be known who are my chosen. You know, there's going to come a time where they say, well, the Most High is definitely choosing with this group. And it's up to those other people that follow those other groups to either get with the program, whether they follow us or they come to the realization and they see it and they break off from their teachers. You're gonna have a you're gonna have a Jake's you're gonna have Jake's bugging out when when that last prophecy before the deliverance, the destruction, and the um, setting up of Israel on the earth which Israel is being, the kingdom is being set up when we out there. The Lord told the wicked scribes and Pharisees, the kingdom of, of heaven is within you. So the kingdom of heaven starts with us. This is the house of David being rebuilt, Amos, the ninth chapter. So we are to do two things. First and foremost, we are to let our people know that they're the Israelites, and that the script, this is the, the book that you're supposed to be using, the scriptures. You notice you got vocab on one side, the so-called Christian side coming against us hard. They're really persecuting us. Well, prosecuting. When I think of the word persecute, I think of the word prosecute. It's, they're almost it's, it's, uh, one and the same. Because they don't really persecute. They don't really uh, uh, persecute. They persecute you, but they're really um, prosecuting you or persecuting you, excuse me, which they're coming against you hard. So those words are similar. And then you got on the other side, you got Jake with their comedic stuff. You know, Captain Tazariak has no business, you know, rubbing elbows with them guys. You shouldn't have nothing to do with those guys. This, this, this is simple, man. 
defeat this role and go out and teach the children of Israel. But the script, the Lord says, also lift ye up a banner upon the high mountain. You know, um, exalt the voice, shake the hand, that they may go into the gate to the noble. So who are we to shake the hand to? The Edomites, the, the, the elite of Esau. So anyway, let me just read this again. Is that he who smote the people in wrath with a continual stroke, he that ruled the nations in anger is persecuted. And none hindereth. So, like I said, we have two jobs. So let me look up the word persecute, persecute. Move this over. Persecute, let me go to synonym. Persecute, oppress, abuse, victimize, ill treat, mistreat. Afflict, torment. Torture. When they get you in the court system, you know, in American jurisprudence, in American law, you're presumed innocent until proven guilty. When you go into that court system, you're guilty and you have to prove your innocence. That's what really goes on. It says, uh, what is the uh, synonym, synonym of persecute? Some, some common synonyms of persecute are aggrieve, oppress, and wrong, while all these words mean to injure unjustly or outrigorously persecute implies a, a relentless and unremitting subjection to annoyance or suffering.
definition of prosecute. Institute legal proceedings against a person or organization. So when I think of prosecute, I also think of persecute. Continue with a course of action with a view to its completion. And that's what we're supposed to do. We're supposed to prosecute and persecute. We're bringing all the evidence out on this, on this Edomite, on this devil. That's job number two. Job number one is to wake up Israel. Job number two is to tell the wicked, the one that's in power, where he's going to go. So let's come back to the sixth uh, verse, Isaiah 14, verse six. He who smote the people in wrath with a continual stroke, I'm also thinking about right now, Nahum chapter three, I may go to it. He that ruled the nations in anger is, is persecuted and none hindereth. So let me go, let me go on to the blue letter definition of persecute or persecuted. And this is the main reason why we're demonized because we're, we're a part of the gospel that we teach is that these nations and the number one nation, Esau, you're going into captivity. You, you led us into captivity. We're going to lead you into captivity. This is why you have this clown vocab saying that, uh, oh, Revelation 13, 9 and 10 does not, doesn't mean what the Israelites say it means. How else can you break it down? That means captivity under Jesus. No, it's talking about hardcore captivity. Shackles, chains, yoke, yokes of iron. Being lynched, working in the field, getting your ass kicked. Your woman being ravished. Whatever you, you did to us and our people, we're going to do to you. Scriptures say double. So when you look up this word, uh, persecuted doesn't say too much. But when you go to the root of the word, the word is ratap. And it means to pursue. Persecute. Follow, chase. Persecute, pursue. And this is what a, prose a prosecutor does. He, he gets all the information together to bring against you. All the evidence stacked against you. Sometimes the evidence is overwhelming. And, and, and in the case of us getting on Esau, starting with their leadership, the evidence is overwhelming that they are the wicked. It says follow after. To chase, to uh, give flight. It says to be, to, to be behind. When you're behind somebody, you're chasing them. They're running and you're on them. Follow after. So when you have a group that goes out of Israelites, just say, well, I'm just going to teach my people. I said, I'm not going to get on Esau. Well, then that's, you're not obeying the most, the, the, 
the words of the Most High. That's part of the ministry. Tell them where they're going. Tell them their future. Jeremiah 1. What is it saying? Jeremiah 1 and 4. I made thee a prophet unto the nations. He told that to Jeremiah. That applies to us. Uh, to be behind, follow after, pursue, persecute, run after. To pursue, pursue to put to flight. Chase a uh, dog to tend closely upon, to persecute, harass. So we're to harass them. We're to get up in their face and harass them with this truth. That's why we say the small hats are not the real people. So they get like guys like Vocab Malone. Uh, to uh, counteract what we're saying. That's why everyone that is, every man that is a part of GMS, you're supposed to be doing it. Not, not what you, you're not supposed to have your hands in your pocket thinking about what you're going to do. If, you, if you're doing that, don't be in the camp. And all you camp leaders, if you got guys that are just, now you might have guys that are helpers. They're close to you or whatever. But they all supposed to be out there. If you're a member of GMS, you're supposed to be putting up videos constantly. You're supposed to be on the highways and the byways, you know, pushing this word. And you're supposed to be speaking on two subjects. Number one, waking up Israel to the gospel. And number two, telling the wicked where they're going to go. That's it. It's just that simple. You have Jakes that can't see it. You leave them alone. You don't hang out with them. You don't. At the end of the day, you don't. You don't hang out with atheists or Mo's. You know, or well, my good friend. He's a Jehovah Witness. No, he's not your friend. He's the enemy. He's the enemy. That's why you have no business. You know, rubbing elbows with Sarnetta and uh, the rest of them. Like it's like we're buddy. We're not we're not friends. We're enemies, man. You're the enemy. I was thinking about this yesterday. Would you have a friend? You have a son, let's say, right? And you have your best friend that you grew up with, but he's a mo. And you know he doesn't say nothing to your son, but when you're not around, he's whispering in your son's ears to be a mo. You're not supposed to have. You're not supposed to have. Moe's as friends. Now you might see a Mo that you work with. Hey, how you doing? Bill, what's going on? That's about it. You don't, you don't, you don't invite a Mo. You do, you do not invite a Mo to a cookout. <laughs> That's funny to me. I don't know about y'all, but anyway, you know, you got, and, and, and another thing, you're not supposed to be involved in uh, family reunions because those are not your family no more. Your, your family, you ain't supposed to be take, taking care. You, you know, there's a certain situation, take care of your nephews or whatever. But you got you to gotta separate from them, man. You, you basically dealing with your friends and your family are ones that are in Israel. They know that they're Israelites and out there teaching this word. This word. And putting up videos. Not having your favorite uncle. Your favorite uncle is no longer your favorite uncle. If he can't get this truth, you ain't dealing with him. Your mama can't get this truth, you ain't dealing with him. Now, you got to deal with your mother and your father to a certain extent. But, you know, as a, as a father, as you deal with a father and a mother. If they can't get it, you don't say nothing. Your mother needs certain help you know you go go and help her of course she needs to do shopping you pick her up you let her go shopping whatever the case may be they said to pursue put the flight chase dog attend closely upon to persecute harass to follow after 
And that's what we're doing. We get the articles concerning Esau. We, now we're going into um, this whole Russia, Ukraine um, conflict, war. And we speak, all, we speak on that and we filter everything to the scriptures, right? It says to follow after, aim to secure, to run after, a bribe figur figuratively to be pursued, one pursued, to pursue ardently, aim eagerly to secure, pursue, to be pursued, be chased away, to pursue, to chase. So we're chasing them with the truth in our hand. A primitive route, route to run after, usually with hostile intent, uh, figuratively of time gone by, chase, put to flight, follow after on, hunt, be under, uh, persecute. And, and we persecute them with this truth. Prosecute, persecute. It says, uh, I'll give you a couple of precepts. Uh, Genesis 14 and 14. And when Abraham heard that his brother, which was Lot, which is actually his nephew, uh, like I said in, in the previous video, um, Tamar, the scriptures say Tamar was the daughter of David. Tamar was actually the, the uh, granddaughter of David. That was Absalom's daughter. That um, Amnon um, uh, raped and she fell in love with him after she got raped. And that's, that's what happens. You grab it and you do something. They, she fell in love. She got raped and she fell in love. She wasn't, she wasn't traumatized by it. She fell in love with the man. If you get it and it's good, you want to keep getting it. That's an inside joke. If you can tell me where I got that from, you're good. From a movie. It was a female that said it. She said, if you're getting it and it's good, you want to keep getting it. Anyway, it says, Genesis 14 and 14, and when Abram, heard that this, that his brother was taken captive or his nephew, which was a lot. He armed his trained servants, born in his, born, born in his own house, uh, 318 and pursued them unto Dan. So that was a physical pursuit. And these, and then, you know, for, for the ones you that say, well, slavery is the most high is not with slavery. Well, wait a minute. Was not the most high with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob? Was not the most high with their, their women? Rebecca, Leah, Rachel, did not Ra Leah and Rachel have servants, ma maid servants? So slavery has always been around. We're slaves into this man's system. We were found in his hand. He that is found in, he that taketh him and selleth him, or if he be found in his hand, shall surely be put to death. So we're still in the hand of this man. We're under his authority. You got to pay taxes to him. You go through a red light, they pull you over, you better go to court. They're going to they're gonna put a bench warrant on you and they're going to lock you up. So you ain't not, you, you Negroes out there, you ain't nothing but a slave to this man, to this system. So anyway, let's come back to Isaiah 14, and I want to read the whole chapter. And this is a future event. Now it says Israel's taunt. 
Oh, let's deal with the word taunt. We're supposed to taunt them with, with these words. They're going into slavery. That's what we got. We're supposed to taunt them. Let me look up the word taunt. Then I'll look it up in the Hebrew. A remark made in order to anger, wound, or provoke someone. And this is why Esau demonizes us because we're taunting them. We're telling them, look, we went into captivity under you, and that's a fact. And now you're going to have to go into captivity under us. That's why the go to scripture, there's many scriptures on that, but the, the go to scripture, well, is Isaiah 14. So we are to taunt them with that in uh, Revelation uh, 13, 9, and 10. You can't break it down any other, you know, interpret it any other way. He that leaves in the captivity shall go into captivity. He that killed with the sword must be killed with the sword. There is a patience and the faith of the saints. Who are the saints? The Israelites. So let's come back. Let me go on to the Hebrew. Uh, well, that's not in the Hebrew. Israel's taunt, right? It says, Isaiah 14 and 1, for Yahweh will have mercy on Jacob and will yet choose Israel. That's talking about Israel as a whole because the two kings have come back together in this time, the fulfillment of Ezekiel 37, and set them in their own land. And uh, strangers, which are other Israelites that come into this fold. Okay, I came into this thing almost about 37 years ago, right? There's individuals that came into this fold that's been in this thing for the last going on 15 years. So at, that, at one time, before they heard us on YouTube, they were strangers, but they were still Israelites. They just didn't know that they were Israelites. And the tool that the Most High used to push this word, to, to publish this word throughout the whole planet Earth, is the what? The web, YouTube. We don't got to go on Facebook and TikTok and just deal with the, U the YouTube. Now, we're dealing with Odyssey as well. When you have your, your super controversy videos that you know if you put on YouTube, they're going to take it down. You put it on Odyssey. Odyssey don't, won't take it down. It says, and set them in their own land and the strangers shall be joined with them and they shall cleave to the house of Jacob. And that's what they did. These brothers that came in 14, 13, 14, 15 years ago. And we don't got to tell them there's nothing. They're just the spirits on them. The spirits on them. They're planning like GMS uh, Dallas. They're planning on coming out to New York and get with us. And um, whether they come or not, it's no big deal. They come out, they come out. You know, you got other brothers that get with other camps and get, you know, they break bread with them. That's where you get the word company. Company means to break bread. Look it up. Uh, second verse, Isaiah 14, verse 2. And the people shall take them and bring them to their place in the house of Israel shall possess them in the land of the Lord. You want to look up the word possess? We already know what the word possess means. Land of the Lord, which is Israel, which is the whole planet Earth. The headquarters is going to be in the land of Israel. For servants and handmaids, the slave, slave men and slave women, and they shall what? Take them captives, who captive they were, and they shall what? Rule over their oppressors. The ones that oppressed us, we will oppress them. Let's look up the word oppressor.
oppressors. Uh, Nag Nagash, to press, drive, oppress, exact, exert, demanding pressure, to press, drive, to exact, a driver, taskmaster, ruler, oppressor, tyrant, lord, exactor of tribute, which is tax, they tax your ass, to be hard pressed. And it shall come to pass in, in a day that the Lord shall give thee rest. That's the kingdom from thy sorrow and from thy fear and from the hard bondage <clears throat> wherein thou was made to serve. And that's talking about right now. Let's look up the word bondage. You can't interpret Isaiah chapter 14 in any other way. I Buddha. Labor, service, labor, work, labor of servant or slave, uh, labor. And all of you, Jake's are slaves. All of you are slaves. Uh, Oprah Winfrey is a slave. Floyd Mayweather is a slave. Stevie Wonder is a slave. You're all slaves because if, if Oprah did shows and they bigged up Israel, she she'll be out of she'll be out of pocket, man. She, they'll 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 get up. They'll bring scandals against her. She'll wind up being homeless. She knows she's got it. She knows her role, man, in society in this in this double society. So we're going to get rest from thy sorrow. Sorrow is stress, stressed out. Got a lot of Jakes that are fat. They got big bellies because they're stressed. So Jake eats a lot of comfort food. That's why they're suffering from diabetes, um, all kinds of diseases. Diabetes is one of them, high blood pressure pressure and part of blood pressure high blood pressure is um if you're if you're depressed if you're stressed out it brings up the the, the pressure and in the bad diet and from the hard bondage of wherein thou was made to serve under who under the enemy who's the last enemy Esau that thou should it take up this proverb against the king of Babylon. Who's the king of Babylon? The leaders of the system. And say, how hath the oppressor ceased? The golden city ceased. America's done. This motherfucker's done. It ain't, com it ain't coming back. And you got a walking, co talking corpse called Biden. Nobody, nobody, nobody follows Biden, man. Oh, this guy, um, the guy, the current mayor of New York, City Eric Adams, he has a he has a low percentage rating as far as his job is concerned. So he just he just been in he just been in this thing a couple months and he's got a low rating. You know, New York City is basically got Gotham City. I'm surprised when you see seen a uh, Bane walking around. This is this system is being broken down, man. Donald Trump called for a civil war. So you know he was behind the January 6th thing, but they ain't locked him up yet. 
because Satan is with him. That's that's uh that's uh, Nero. I highly believe, strongly believe that that's Nero. As a matter of fact, let me do this. Trump is Nero. Let me see what comes up. Oh, look at this. Wait a minute. Uh-oh. Wait. So, so who is Nero? And why are people comparing him to... Let's click. Drum roll, please. And this was as of two years ago. It says, wait, so, so who is Nero? And why are people comparing him to Trump? And there it goes. There it goes. That's, that's freaking Nero coming back. Everything is reincarnated, vocab Malone. And I said that when, when he came into office, I said, that's Nero. Trump is compared to, to Nero because he is Nero. Trump tweets a meme of himself fiddling, drawing a comparison to Rome, Roman Emperor Nero. That's Nero. American, let's see what this is all about. American Nero, the history of the destruction of the rule of law and why Trump is the worst offender. Donald Trump, the American Nero. Nero fiddle, Trump golfs. And this guy, Biden is way worse than, than, than Trump. Now he could be um, Vespasian. The Lord have broken the staff for the wicked. You see this place crumbling and the scepter of the rulers. He who smote the people in wrath with a continued stroke. He that ruleth the nations in anger is persecuted. And we are persecuting them. We're telling them that they're going into captivity. That they can't. We, well, we, We've been telling them go years back. We've been telling them, telling them that this place is going to crumble. And it's now crumbling. So the Lord is right at the door. Daniel uh, chapter 7, verse 9 is getting ready to be fulfilled. The Lord is getting ready to show himself. It says, and none hindereth. The whole, the whole earth is at rest. That's when the kingdom comes in. And it's quiet. They break forth into singing. They're going to rejoice when this man goes down. 
say like in the Wizard of Oz, there's a thing done, the witch is dead, the wicked witch is dead. Well, this is the wicked witch that's going to be dead. It says, uh, yeah, they were getting all into it. Ding dong, the wicked witch, the wicked witch is dead. Ding dong, the wicked witch is dead. Well, the wicked witch is getting ready to die by, by fire. It's a year, the fir trees rejoice at thee, and the cedars of Lebanon saying, since thou art laid down, no feller, uh, which is a faller, a lumberjack, because Esau is, is likened unto the lumberjack. Another thing this devil does is there's a thing called deforestation. I hope I said that right. Where they cut down a lot of trees to build up buildings. But you know what? They destroy the, the quality of oxygen. The, the, uh, the, the trees breathe in, uh, what is that, CO2 gases. And they produce oxygen for us to breathe. So we can't live without the tree, and the tree can't live without us. They said, no fella is come up against us. Because when, oh, well, this is for Elder Lahab. Lahab said the Edomites are going to gather back together after a thousand years, and they're going to come against us again. Well, that, this right here, the A verse kills that. Since thou had brought down, no fella is come up against us ever. And plus, we're going to exterminate Esau. It said, hell from beneath is moved to meet thee at that, come, at, at that coming. It stirred from the dead. Uh, for thee, the dead are the nations that are below Esau. Now they're coming into power. Let the weak say, I am strong. Even all the chief ones of the earth. Um, and they're all making their deals. I was watching one show with the redacted, redacted, uh, uh, YouTube page called Redacted as a husband and wife team. And I believe it was the husband that said, uh, I believe I, I could be wrong, but he mentioned the word hegemony. Look at that word up. It basically means the bully on the block. At one time, America was a bully on the block. Uh, Daniel uh, Seven, he's more, he was more, uh, what was the term? It's more stout than his brother which when the little eyes became more stout than its, than its fellows, its brethren, the other European nations. So these nations, they, they're hating, you know, they, they, they hate this place. And they are all gonna shoot missiles on this place any goddamn way. They're building up NATO to really come against Babylon the Great. Revelation 17, verse 12, one down. It says, in the dead for the even all the chief ones of the earth, it has raised up from that, their thrones all the kings of the nations. Like you have the BRICS nations. And those are some powerful nations. China, Russia, France. I mean, I'm sorry, China, Russia, uh, Brazil, uh, India. The population of India is over a billion people. The population of China is over a billion people. So with those BRIC nations, you have, uh, I don't know, 30% of the population of the planet are um, uh, among the BRIC nations. China can build a two million man China can build a 10 million man army and sacrifice them and they, they ain't lost nothing. They're going to be like the immortals. They're, you got to understand there's over a billion people in China. China, the population of China is three times bigger than the population of the United States. So this place is done. 10 verse. And they shall speak and say unto thee, art thou also become weak as weak? Let the weak say I am strong. Art thou become like unto us? 
the great equalizer is the um, the IZ, ICBM missile system, the um, hypersonic missile system. You have a bully on the block in school, and let's say he has some uh, disease where he shrinks up. Guess what you're gonna do? You're gonna bully. You're gonna bully him. You know, you know this guy bullies you, and y'all go. You have summer break, and then you come back, and all of a sudden you just shoot up. You just get you grow, get muscles. You might, you know, practice Brazilian jiu-jitsu or whatever, and you're just as big as the bully or bigger than the bully. Who's in, who's a bully now? You're gonna bully this guy. You're going to beat the shit out of him. You're going to take his milk money. And that's how it works. So America, through hegemony, um, they were the, which, can, which is considered the bully on the block. Let me see if I can look that up, if I can spell it. I'm not the best speller in the world. I think it's hegemony. Gem, Gem, I believe, a Gemini definition. Leadership or dominance, especially by one country or social group over others. They, they were more scout than their fellows. What is an example of hegemony? Hegemony. An example of hegemony is this: is a student government leadership in the school dominance. I don't like that. Okay, is the United States a hegemon? Within NATO, moreover, the U.S. remains a dispensable he a hegemonic force as seen in the decline and the alliance uh, uh, decline of the alliances external value profile the French social politician Herbert V. Dream in uh, 1999 described the U.S. as a, a hegemonic high power or higher power because of its unilateral military actions worldwide. So they're, the, they're like the unwritten uh, leader because there's really not supposed to be any leader, one leader as far as the uh, NATO is concerned, but they are the leader. But these, but they're losing their leadership. They see that the bully is getting weak. It says that pomp is brought down to the grave. And grave is, when you look up the word grave, the word there, I guarantee the word is going to be uh, sha'al. Let's, let's find out. I could be wrong. That pomp has been brought down to the grave. What is that word? Sha'al. Sha'al which anytime you come across the word hell, let's see, let's find out. Let's see what Job, Job 11 and 8 says. The word is shawa'al, which means grave. That's what it means. Pit. It's not a place that you burn in hell for eternity.
11 verse. That pomp, is, that pomp is brought down to the graves and the noise of thy vows and music that's in Revelation 18, the worm represents uh, corrosion, the bridges, you, everything falling apart in America is, is spread under thee and the worms cover thee, corrosion. How art thou fallen from heaven? Oh, Lucifer, Lucifer is talking about Esau, not the spiritual demon, Satan, the son of the morning. How art thou cut down to the ground, which it did its weaken, weaken the nations. For thou hast said in thine heart, I will ascend unto the heaven. How did they do that? Through their planes, through their, uh, their um, Apollo missions, through their shuttles, through their, their, the fact that they can go up in the outer space, the ISS, the International Space Station. Who are the two major nations up there, Russia and America? They're the dominant ones, which are both Edomites. It says, for thou hast said in thy heart, I will ascend unto heaven, meaning out there among the clouds and beyond the clouds, into space. I will exalt my throne above the stars at most high. I will sit also upon the mount of the congregation in the sides of the north. Now, these wacky, tacky Christians, they go into, uh, well, you know, Satan was a righteous angel and, you know, pride took him over and he got certain other righteous angels and they became demons. That's a, that's a, that's a old wife's tale. That's a fable. That's why so many people are leaving Christianity. Vocab alone. You trying to come against us, you should try to get some of them Christians back. Matter of fact, let me prove that. Try this one. Why I left Christianity. And this list goes on. I can be here all day scrolling while well, I left Christianity and then came back. Well, you're an Edomite anyway. Why well, I left Christianity, why well, I gave up Christianity, why well, I left Christianity. Pastor, pastor, pastor leaves Christianity after 30 years. I got to come back and watch that. Why well, I left Christianity. Why well, I left Christianity, that's a Jake woman. Why did she leave Christianity for African spirituality? There's no founda real foundation to Christianity. Why well, I left Christianity, everything changed when I left Christianity. Why well, I left Christianity? Why are black churches closing down all across the US? Because Jake is waking up. I used to be a pastor. Oh, this is this is the uh, Mi uh, Michi X. It says I I I used to be a pastor, but now I am no longer a Christian. Here's why: she's in the so-called you know comedic, you know. <laughs> self proclaimed Christian fascist. Hey, that's what um, vocab is. He's a Christian fascist. Uh, Try to invade gay establishment. That's what you should be supposed to be doing. Look at these are crazy. These are crazy people. You Christians are out of your damn mind. I can't play it. Christian, <laughs> Christian fascist invade gay establishment. You should be doing that uh, vocab.
this is what it feels like to leave Christianity. Ex-Christian, why I left Christianity in the church. Even Christianity saved me. Why and the Edomites leave me? Why I left Christianity? That's a clown. Why I left Christianity? How my Christian faith fell apart. A case study of deconstruction. You know, the Edomite, why I left Christianity one year later. What was it like? to leave evangelical Christianity as a married couple. A God of disappointment, leaving Christianity. Five reasons I left Christianity. Why I left Christianity, leaving Christianity saved me. No longer Christian. David Woods, he's down with vocab. Why I really left Christianity. That's all I need, let's come back. Isaiah 14, verse 13. For thou hast said in thy heart, I will ascend into the heavens, I will exalt my throne above the stars of, of the most high that's out of space. I will sit also upon the mount of the congregation. The congregation is are the Israelites in the sides of the north. The deliverance is going to come out the north. America, North America. I will send upon the, up above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the most high. That's in Ezekiel 28. But thou, you, you're going to realize that you're nothing but a man and, and a nobody. Yet thou shalt be brought, brought down to hell to the sides of the pit. They that see thee shall narrowly look upon thee and consider thee saying, is this the man that made the earth to tremble that did shake kingdoms? This red hairy thing, he shook the, he shook the world? Yeah, because the most High put the spirit on him. That made the world as a wilderness and destroyed the cities thereof that open not the house of his prisoners. We are the prisoners. He refuses to let us go. And you ain't gonna get no reparations out of this man. The man don't got no reparation to give you. All the kings of the nations, even all of them lie in glory. Everyone in his own house, because we're gonna put the nation in order, they're gonna be happy, but we're gonna be over them. We're going to be over them, but we're going to set them up in their own lands. And like I said, we're going to be over them. We're going to be masters over them. We'll be able to say, we are your masters. Something that Lahab used to say in class. He said, look, we are your masters. The seven are your masters. Anyway, it says uh, 19 verse, but thou art cast out of thy grave like an abominable branch and as the remnant of those that are slain because you're going to be slain. That's what Obadiah 118 uh, thrust through with the sword that go down to the stones of the pit as a carcass trodden under foot feet. Thou shalt not be joined with them in burial because thou 
has destroyed thy land and slain thy people, the seed of evildoers. That's, that's what Esau is. You're, you're the seed of evildoers. You're the ungodly. You're the wicked. Shall never be renowned. You're not, you're not going to come back. Oh, that's another cut for Elder Lahab. After a thousand years, they're going to gather back together and they're going to sneak up on us and they're going to take us over again. But it says, it says here, it's what your verse. Thou shalt not be joined with them in burial because thou hast destroyed thy land and slain thy people. Right, you killed your own people. There's going to fit to be a, 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 a civil war. This is what Donald Trump called for a civil war. The sea of evildoers shall never be what? Renowned. They're not going to come back into power. They're going to be gathered together pursuant to Obadiah 1 verse 18. Prepare slaughter for his children for the iniquity of his father that they do not rise. They're not going to rise back up. It says, uh, Let me try this. Let me try this. Let me see what comes up. But that's not what I want, but that's okay. So they're not coming back in power. But I will raise up against them, say if the hour of hosts and cut off from Babylon, which is the daughter of Babylon, the name and the remnant and the son and the nephew, say if Yahweh, I will also, they're going to be totally cut off. Then they're going to be exterminated. We're going to exterminate them. We're going to liquidate them. I will also, and that's the only nation that's going to be exterminated or liquidated. I will also make it uh, a possession for the bittern and pools of water. And I will sweep it with the besom or the broom of destruction, say of the Lord of hosts. The broom of destruction are the missiles. And that didn't happen in ancient Babylon. The Lord Yahweh of hosts have sworn, saying, surely I, as I have thought, so shall it come to pass. And as I have purpose, so shall it stand, that I will break the Assyrian. The, the Assyrian represent what? It's another name for Babylon. Spiritually, Sodom and Egypt. It says that I will break the Assyrian, which is Babylon, in my land and upon, and upon my mountains, tread them underfoot, then shall his yoke depart from off them there's a there's a, a yoke there's yokes upon us but it's documents see we're under this man's jurisdiction through documents through adhesion contracts social security number birth certificate uh driver's license job applications that's how they can get you through, through that paper yoke and his, and that's, in, that's also in Jeremiah of chapter 30. Read the whole chapter, cha Jeremiah chapter 30. And his burden depart from off their shoulders. Because we literally had yokes of iron on our shoulders, right? On our necks. But now they're, they're paper yokes. And see, that's why you got Jake's thinking that they're free. 
because there's no physical yokes on them. This is the purpose that is purpose upon the whole earth. And this is the hand that is stretched out upon all the nations. For Yahweh host hath purpose, and who shall disannul it? There's nothing that Esau can do. Esau can't call for a national fast. The Most High is not going to forgive you. It says, and his hand is stretched out, and who shall turn it back? So the damage is about to be done. And the year that King Isaiah died was his burden. Rejoice not, rejoice not thou, O Palestinian, that's talking about the other, represents the other nations, mainly the so-called Arab nations, because the rod, the rod of him that smote thee, which is Esau, is broken. Uh, Psalms 2, why did the heathens rage and the, and the, na and the nations uh, was a follow a vain thing? I'm paraphrasing. Somebody can put in the comment section and the people uh, follow a, 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 a strain. Uh, matter of fact, let me go to it so I don't botch it up. Psalms 2. Why do the heathen rage and the people imagine the same thing? So rejoice not thou, whole Palestinian, because the rod of him, Esau, that smote thee is broken, but out of, out of the serpent's root shall come forth a cockatrice, and his fruit shall be a fiery flying serpent. Now, when you go to the Hebrew, fiery flying serpent or fiery serpent, the word is, um, matter of fact, let me, let me click on that. Sarap. Serpent, fiery serpent. It's talking about the missiles. Now, when you go to Isaiah 6 and 2, it says, above it stood the seraphims. The seraphims translate into fly, fiery flying serpents. But right here in Isaiah 2, this is talking about shuttle ships that came out of the father's ship of Yahweh Shai when you read it. It was the, the angels that taught them how, about flight. Esau didn't figure out flight. The, 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 the Most High gave him that technology. So in Isaiah 6, it's talking about the angels and, for lack of a better way of saying it, shuttle ships that hovered around the fathership. But right here, this is talk, what Isaiah saw was the missiles, fiery flying serpents. And the, and the firstborn of the poor shall feed. That represents us, it represents Yahweh Shai, that represents us, because we're the firstborn of the poor. We're the needy, you know, we're the meek, the meek shall inherit the earth, and the needy shall lie down in safety. That's us in the kingdom. That they that they the most high may give us rest from the bondage. And I will kill thy root with famine, and he shall stay, slay thy remnant. That's talking about Esau. Hell gate. Cry, O city, thou whole Palestinian, which of these other represent the other nations. Specifically, he's talking about the Arabs. 
are dissolved, but there shall come from the north a smoke, and none shall be alone in his appointed time. That smoke, they're going to get the smoke from the missiles. What shall one then answer the messenger of the nations or the nation that Yahweh hath founded Zion and the poor of his people shall trust in it? Let me look up the word Zion. Hebrew word to Zion. Another name for Yerushalayim, especially in the prophetic books. Right, another name for the Israelites. Anyone with that, I'm going to say Shalom. Shalom. 